Hi, it's Kyle from Bytewing Games, and today we're learning how to play Zoo Vadis, Grinder Knizia's update on his classic Co Vadis. The point of the game is to win, and you win by having the most points. Points are earned by collecting Laurel tokens, or points, as you move through the zoo. You can also earn points by giving your vote to help others move forward. And you can even squeeze a few extra points out of other players through negotiation. You will play as one of seven animal factions, each striving to become the zoo mascot. To move from one exhibit to the next, you must earn the majority vote of the current exhibit. So I would need two votes to move from this exhibit to the next. As you move through the zoo, you will collect laurel tokens. Once the star exhibit is full, the game ends and the player with the most points wins. But there is a catch. You only qualify for victory as the zoo mascot if you have at least one of your characters in the star exhibit. Let's take a look at the setup. Set out the double-sided board on the proper side for the number of players. Place a peacock figure on each depicted space for the number of players. Each player selects an animal, taking the player screen, two ability tiles, and six animals. Each player takes two one-value laurels, place the remaining one-value laurels next to the board. And this is the deluxe version with the clay coins. Yours might just have the cardboard cutouts, but it's the same thing. The remaining laurel tokens of other values should be placed in the cloth bag. Shake the bag well and draw and place a laurel token face up onto the designated spaces on the board. Place the zookeeper on top of the laurel token directly below the star exhibit. The player who most recently visited a zoo is the starting player. On your turn, you can take one of four actions. 1. Place an animal into the zoo, 2. Advance an animal, 3. Advance a peacock, or 4. Move the zookeeper. To move an animal into the zoo, simply take one of your animal tokens and place it onto one of the spaces at the bottom of the board. If all of them are full, you can't take this action. Action number 2 is to advance one of your animals. To advance an animal, you either need the zookeeper present, or you need a majority vote. To move past the zookeeper, just move your animal from one exhibit, past the zookeeper, to the next exhibit. The downside here? He is covering the laurel token so you don't earn any points. The other, more common way of moving is by getting the majority of votes. Each exhibit has a number of seats. To move, you need a majority of seat votes. So to move from this exhibit, I need two out of three votes, regardless of the number of figures in that exhibit. To move from this exhibit, I just need one vote, my own. So this movement is automatic. So if I'm the armadillo player and I want to move from this exhibit to the next, I need three votes. I have two votes already, my own two, but I need a vote from this marmoset. If he says I can move, I now have three votes and I'm able to move forward, collecting the laurel token on my way. If that marmoset wouldn't have voted me through, I wouldn't lose my turn, I just have to select a different character to try to move forward or a different action entirely. So why would that marmoset vote me through? Well, for one, anytime you vote another player through, you get one laurel token from the supply. So the marmoset gets one laurel. But maybe the marmoset is feeling a bit greedy and says she'll only vote me through if I give her an additional laurel. Or she could say she'll vote me through here if I vote her through in another exhibit. So what can you trade? You can trade laurels. You can trade promises of future votes, or promises to move or not move the zookeeper. Really anything is game here. The only binding contract is one that could be fulfilled immediately. So if I say vote me through and I'll give you two laurels, I have to do that because I can give you the two laurels now. But if I say vote me through here and I'll vote you through there, well, we'll see what happens. There's no binding promises there. But what about the peacocks? Where do they come into effect? Sometimes you can't convince a player to help vote you through, but the peacocks are always there and they're consistent, if not a little greedy. You can bribe a peacock in your exhibit to earn their vote, but they require a two-value laurel token or higher. Two single laurel tokens won't do. It must be value two or higher. This bribed token is returned back to the box, and they don't give change. As far as the movement, it's quite simple. You can only move your player piece forward along the main paths into an exhibit that has an empty seat. If you cross a path with a laurel token, it's yours. So no backward movement, no moving through tunnels, 
No skipping exhibits. Basically, just don't try cheating. It doesn't matter which seat you move your token into, except for in the star exhibit. Fill from low to high here, it's the tiebreaker. Once you've moved your animal and collected the laurel, replace it with a new laurel from the bag. Keep your collected laurels hidden behind your screen. And remember, aside from collecting laurels for moving along paths, you will earn one laurel from the supply for each vote you give to help another species move forward. If I'm the armadillo and I need three votes to get through, maybe everyone here is willing to give me that vote. They don't each get the laurel. I would choose which player's vote I accept, and that player alone would get the extra laurel. And while we're discussing laurels, they can't be exchanged, so I can't exchange my two value for two ones from the bank. I can try to negotiate with players to give me change, but it's a game of negotiation. You choose what happens. So action number three was to advance a peacock. Peacocks move just like normal animals, but they don't collect tokens and they don't need majority of votes. They are an excellent tool to help yourself or hinder others. Each time you move a peacock, you will earn a one laurel token. The fourth action is to move the zookeeper. You may move the zookeeper to any other laurel token on the board, stacking him on top of that laurel. This can be a great way to guarantee you a spot in the star exhibit, or a way to stop a player from collecting a valuable token. Because remember, players moving past the zookeeper do so freely, but without earning the laurel. So that's the game, mostly. The last thing is the animal abilities. Each animal has two animal ability tokens, and each faction is a slightly different ability. You can't use your abilities on yourself, only other players can use them, so this is another great negotiation tactic. Your two ability tokens can be placed on top of your player screen, and these are one-time uses. So once it's used, place it behind your screen so players know it's no longer available. Aside from a great negotiation tactic, many of the abilities award the owner of the token bonus laurels when another player uses them, as indicated on the tokens. So this token will award you two laurels anytime it's used, this one gives you one laurel when it's used, and this token gives you zero laurels when it's used. Let's dive in and go over each of the animal abilities. And these are all on the player screen so you can easily reference them. The Ibis allows a moving animal to enter a full exhibit. So as the armadillo, I could use this ability to move onto the board if this dang marmoset won't get out of the way. And the Ibis player will earn two laurels when I use their token. I could use the hyena's action to move the zookeeper and move into the star exhibit all in one fell swoop. If I use the tiger's ability, I can move past the zookeeper and collect the underlying token. The marmoset's ability will let me collect a different laurel from anywhere on the board when moving from one exhibit to another. The crocodile will allow an animal to advance twice when entering a one space exhibit. And the rhino will allow me to carry another animal with me as I move. So if I needed the rhino's vote to move through, he may negotiate that he'll vote me through if I carry him with me. I use his ability to carry another animal, in this case the rhino, with me. He doesn't collect the token, but it does help him advance. And the armadillo will allow an animal to advance through a tunnel without getting majority support. You'll notice that most laurel tokens are just points, but a few of them also have bonuses. This token will give you two points, but as soon as you earn it, you may also move a peacock one space, earning an additional laurel for moving a peacock. This token will give you two points, but will also act as an immediate free action of moving the zookeeper. And this token will give you two points, but also let you refresh one of your used ability tokens. If you haven't used any, you just earn the two points. And all of these special abilities are earned as soon as you take the token from the board. It's not something that can be transferred or saved for later, and they're not reactivated if you trade that token to another player later. So how does the game end? Once the star exhibit is full, the game ends immediately. All players with at least one animal in the star exhibit compare their points from laurels, and the player who has collected the most laurels becomes the zoo mascot. And wins the game. In case of a tie, the player who entered the star exhibit earliest wins the game. And now you know how to play Zoo Vadis. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. Until next time.